Want to know how to make your bullets slipperier? Have them glide through your barrel easier with less coefficient? Lower ES? Less deviation at long range? Stacking them on top of each other? This is Jeff Brozovich from LongRangeOnly.com. I'm going to show you today how we're going to take this Christensen Arms ELR rifle and hex boron nitride, HBN coat the barrel, and also these Burger 300 grain bullets. We're going to apply the HBN coating. I'm going to show you how to do it right here. So stick with us. Here we go. So the first thing you'll need to do is we got to clean all the copper out of the in the powder out of the barrel of this rifle. We want all the carbon removed, all the copper removed, and the, and the bore as clean as we can possibly get it. The first thing I did was break in the barrel of this rifle. I did the traditional one shot clean for several shots and on with that. But anyway, got the barrel all broken in. So now I'm going to show you my procedure using Bortec Eliminator and how we clean the barrel and uh, what we want to achieve to get how clean we want to get it before we start with the hex boron coating. So watching this video we'll go through the steps. First thing we do is we apply several coats, several wet patches of the uh, Bortec Eliminator Cleaner. And in the end we want these patches coming out after a 10 minute soak with no visual signs of blue, no blue liquid dripping out the barrel, no blue on the patches, no black on the patches, just clean patches. And then after that, we will uh, dry patch the bore. We're going to dry patch the bore with five or six dry patches to remove all the cleaner out of there and get the bore completely clean. Then we'll go in with patches and we will clean and dry out the chamber and make sure it's spotless too, you know, clean out all the rails and everything in the chamber end of that gun. So these are the steps as I'm showing you in these videos I'm overlaying here on how we get it clean and what we do. So now our barrel is thoroughly cleaned. While we let that set and kind of dry for a little bit, let's go ahead and get these bullets started on their process. The first thing we want to do is we're going to take a hundred of these bullets, we're going to take them into the sink, and we're going to wash them. I put them in a bowl, hot water, a little bit of dish soap, swish them around and around, clean them all up and everything, and then rinse them two or three times, drain off the excess water, then put them on top of some paper towels and pat them dry. Change the paper towels, do the same thing again, you know, just making sure we're getting all the water we can rotated and cleaned off the bullets. After that, I place the bullets on a cookie sheet, I put a tray in the middle of the oven, at 180 degrees preheated oven for 10 minutes. This warms the bullets up to 180 degrees, dries any bit of moisture there might be off of them, and, and then we're set to go. From there, we go back to the shop. Now that we're back in the shop, we're going to dry out our tumbler. If you had any moisture in there, because it's a liquid uh, stainless tumbler, I use the Thumbler's tumbler from stainless, uh, stainlessmedia.com. Um, I dry that out completely, make sure there's no moisture inside there, paper towels and let it set open for an hour or so and make sure it's dry. And I'll put all the 100 bullets in the bottle and you can pick, there's a couple different manufacturers out there that sells the hex boron kits to coat these bullets. One would be David Tubb sells a nice kit, the other would be bulletcoatings.com. You can get on either one of them websites and make your choice and buy which one you want. But I put stainless media is in my bottle and it's already been pre-coated. I'm following these instructions that came with my kit. So 100 bullets go in, the proper amount of hex boron powder goes in with it. I put the lid on the bottle, tape it all up, and I've cut me a little block of wood so the bottle will set upright in my tumbler and it fits really tight in there so I know it's not going to fall over. Put the lid back on, 
put it on the tumbler and they recommend, the kit I've got recommends uh, two hours per hundred bullets. Because I'm using such big bullets, I put just a little bit more powder than they recommended and I'm going to run it for probably 15 minutes longer than they recommended the two hours. So I'm going to go two hours and 15 minutes. So they're tumbling away and next we'll get them out and show you what they look like. So while them bullets are tumbling, we got two hours to kill. Let's go back to that rifle and I'll show you how to coat your barrel now. Your barrel's dry, it's clean, it's been dry patched out thoroughly. We know everything's clean. You take the little foam swab that comes with the kit. You mix the hex boron, they give you the ratios and the instructions, with 90% or better isopropyl alcohol. I've used 91, I've used 99% alcohol. I can't really see the difference. I have this solution mixed up. You're going to get enough in this kit to last you a lifetime. But anyway, we mix this solution up, swirl it around, coat our swab, and we're going to make two complete passes through the bore. Down and back, down and back, as I'm showing you here in the video. After that, I'm going to go in and I'm going to re-clean my chamber with dry patches and a little brush. And I'm going to, you know, make sure any drips or excess I got, I'm going to clean all that up. And, you know, I don't mind just wiping it down the rails as I'm coming out. You know, if it puts a little coat on the rails, it's just going to make the bolt go smoother. So I don't want any globs or lumps in there. And I want my chamber cleaned out pretty good. But it isn't going to bother me if I wipe a little of this, a bit of this on the rails on the way out. So after the two hours of tumbling, when we pull our bullets out of the tumbler, we need to separate them from the media. I lay them out on a clean towel and scoot them around and pick my media up. And then we want to polish the bullets a little bit. They call it polishing. Some guys will go as far as to get way out there and really polish each bullet. What I've been doing, and I've had good luck, is I just take a microfiber towel on top of them, roll it around, as I'm showing you in the video, clean up the bullets, uh, get all the dust off of them, and just, you know, clean them up so they're ready to go. Now one of the things you're going to notice after you've tumbled, tumbled these bullets, if you've uh, shot a lot of open tipped uh, hollow point bullets before, you notice that the tips aren't all exactly the same, they vary slightly in length and it never affects the performance of the bullet. But after you tumble them like this, they have a tendency to all look the same. They all look like the same, the, the tips are all matching, They're all, all the rough edges are gone and so you've got a nice even tip there. But what I do to ensure that there's no problems, and I like to do this with all the hollow point bullets I shoot, is I take a wire drill with a, uh, for this bullet, this particular bullet, I use a 27,000th drill bit, and I go in each one of these before I load them and make sure that that tip is open clear back to lead. It might have a little HBN stuck in it. There might have been a little copper from the manufacturing process that got closed over in there. I open all them tips up and I have real good luck and I always get expansion out of my bullets. I don't know if it's solely because I do this and I haven't had the problems you've heard of as some people have, but uh, it sure doesn't hurt and I make sure that way I know every bullet that I would shoot at game has got a good, as good a chance as I can give it to expand. What got me started doing this process or a few of the other benefits that I've seen from this is, uh, you know, they, they claim longer barrel life. I can't really attest to that, um, but uh, it sure makes the rifles clean easier. I mean, these rifles, once they've, you're shooting HBN coated bullets and they've been coated, uh, you, you can clean that bore in literally a third the time that it took you before, okay? And it also, uh, it kind of does away with the necessity, if you've got a rifle that uh, coppers up a little bit, it does away with the necessity to clean so often. So you can actually go longer and your cleanups will be easier cleaning your rifle. And of course, after you clean it, just swab the barrel again a couple times and uh, you're good to go. You know, reapply a little HBN to it. If you didn't want to use the HBN liquid, after shooting about 20 to 30 rounds of these bullets, you'll coat your barrel anyway. But rather than go through that waiting period for that barrel to get all settled in by shooting 20 or 30 rounds, I like coating it with the liquid, and uh, that's why I do mine. 
Now, some notes for you when you're working up a load, or if you've got a load and you're switching to HPN, you're going to see a decrease in velocity. That bullet is going to go through that barrel smoother and easier with less drag, and it's going to lower pressure, and it's also going to lower velocity. So you're going to need to increase your powder charge a little bit, uh, usually by about 2%, uh, to get it back up to the velocity it was. So you're going to have to work your load back up. Another thing to note is, after you've coated your barrel and you're starting out and you're, you know, you're just starting out with HBN coated stuff, I would, I'd back my pressure or my uh, charge weight off at least a couple grains, at least, you know, usually about 2% um, for the first two or three shots. One will probably get it, but I do it for two or three shots. And what that does, Let's just say that we had a, for some reason, we got a, a lump of, of HBN in the middle of the barrel. It could create a pressure situation. So just to get the barrel smooth and, and fired in, just back off your powder charge a couple percent and uh, fire a couple rounds first, then go ahead and work your load up from there, you know, to where you want it. Some of the other advantages I've seen to this, uh, besides, uh, you know, the promise of possibly longer throat life, uh, uh, but what, what, what I really did it for was, my ES dropped dramatically. My extreme spread, my velocity from bullet to bullet went to single digits when I started doing this. But another thing I'd noticed, when I got ammo on the shelf with a, you know, for six months at a time you know, that I've previously loaded, I noticed that we were getting, uh, I'd go out and shoot and at extended distances at a mile or so, all of a sudden I got a bullet goes high, then two back on target, and then another one goes high, and I'm like, what is going on here? So I started pulling, I thought there must have been something wrong with my powder charge. So I started pulling my bullets and I noticed that, hey, some pull real easy, some pulled real hard. Well, since I've started putting the HBN coating on the bullets, they don't fuse themselves to the brass jack or the brass uh, of the case and the, between the brass and the jacket of the bullet. You don't have that fusing going on. And if you leave your ammo set for six months or a year at a time, you don't have to worry about it at long range having increased or decreased velocities from bullet to bullet. That's what I was looking for, the consistency at long range. So in conclusion, I don't do this to all my rifles, but I sure do it to my extreme long range rifles. I probably should do it to all my rifles. I think there's benefits there for even a, a 700 yard gun. But uh, right now I'm just doing it to my extreme long range rifles that I stretch way out there. I want to know that every time I chamber around that my velocity is going to be consistent and I can predict where that bullet's going to go. So I hope you found this uh, tutorial informative. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hey, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Come over and check us out on Facebook. You know, we're on there every day. We all got Instagram stuff going up. Like us on Facebook. Check us out. Find us on Instagram. And uh, come over to the site to longrangeonly.com. We've got a great bunch of members there. You can join up for free. Get on the forum. Learn about long range shooting, long range hunting, and a great bunch of guys there. Come check us out and see if you see what you think. Uh, look forward to seeing you. So that's it for today. Jeff Brozovich from longrangeonly.com. Till next time, we'll be seeing you.